Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I am showing you how to crochet these really cute cherry the trees. Now as you can see this is worked up in an amigurumi style pattern which is sewn and then completed by adorning with a little star. If you haven't already don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials or patterns again. Let's find out the materials we need to make our very own terry. Now both of these terry the trees have been made using an arid weight or a worsted weight cotton and you can of course opt to make a smaller tree by changing the yarn size and the hook if you wanted to. So this smaller tree which I've turned into a tree decoration by placing a little bead and a little hanging loop on there. This has been worked up by using size three or a DK weight cotton. To recreate this Terry the Tree, you're going to need some Aran weight or worsted weight yarn. Now I love to use this paint box yarns Cotton Aran, which is the same as their Cotton Worsted. Um, and the color that I'm using for the darker Terry is the Racing Green, which is shade number 628. You're only going to need about 40 to 45 meters to complete both sides of your terry in this main color. In the description box you'll find the details of the other colors that I've used as well. On top of the yarn you're going to be needing to use a four millimeter crochet hook with your iron weight yarn and that will help keep some really nice tight stitches so that you can't see your stuffing showing through. You're also going to need um, some iron weight or worsted weight cotton in a darker shade like a brown um, because that will give us our trunk and this is coffee bean which is shade number 611 again I'm using that paint box yarns cotton iron for this for the star to go atop of the terry this little cute one here you can make two if you want to because they're quite hard to hide all the sewing um, I've just used some iron weight yellow um, originally I had the daffodil shade this is actually this, this yarn here, um, but Paintbox do do a daffodil colour, which is um, shade number 623, which is really quite cute. And you're literally going to need a scrap of red yarn, either um, in cotton or in um, um, acrylic, which is what I've used here, just to create his really cute smile. Now I've used safety eyes on this project because I just like the look of them. They're nice and glossy. Now that's my light ring that you can see reflecting in there. They are actually completely um, black. They don't have, if I get rid of the shadow, I cannot, not completely. They don't actually have um, an eye in them. It's just the way the light's hitting them. And I have two different sizes here to show you the difference between them. This one here is an eight, um, this eye here is a nine millimeter eye. This one is slightly smaller at a six millimeter eye. I've got the backings for my safety eyes and I'm gonna show you how to apply those. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but once they're in, they don't come back out. So it's really important that we get the placement right of those first time. And if you want to recreate a smaller terry, you can indeed, very simply, just by switching down one yarn size. So this is actually worked up in a DK weight cotton. And as you can see, the size difference is quite significant, but it allowed me to create a smaller kind of tree decoration rather than um, a big, a little bit of a squishy that you can have on display instead. Of course, you're going to need a needle and a pair of scissors because there's a few yarns to cut during this project. So let's gather all of those materials. We need iron weight cotton or worsted weight cotton in one color, plus um, a small amount for our trunk, a small amount for our star, your safety eyes if you're planning on using them. You can of course embroider them on if you want to, and of course an absolute scrap of yarn to create a smile. So gather all of your materials and let's get started. Now this pattern is really easy because even though we're going to create a shape by decreasing, we're not actually going to work any decreased stitches. We're going to start by play, making a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. And for row one, we begin with a chain of 19. So we yarn over the hook and bring our hook through that loop on our hook 19 times. So that was one, two, three, four, Once we've completed our chain of 19, we're going to start by working into that second chain from the hook. Remembering that this loop never counts as a stitch or as chain. There's our first chain and we're going to work under just that top loop of our chain by inserting our hook underneath it. 
We're then going to work our UK double crochet, which is the same as a US single crochet. So we yarn over the hook, bring the hook back through. We have two loops on our hook before we yarn over and pull through two. We're going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. So we don't work into that space we've created because we have a stitch coming out of it. We're going into the next chain underneath that top loop, yarn over, bring a loop up, two loops on our hook, we yarn over and pull through those two loops. And we do that for each chain across, making sure that we're placing one US single crochet into each stitch. Continue to work across working those single crochets and I'll meet you at the end ready to go on to row two. So at the end of row one, you should have a stitch count of 18 single crochets. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Remember that that loop on our hook does not count as a stitch. Going into row two, we're going to start with a turning chain of one, and our turning chain or our beginning chain does not count as a stitch. Now we're not going to work that stitch underneath that chain one, but we need to remember that this turning chain also doesn't count as a stitch. By not working into that first stitch, we're going to decrease by one stitch on each row. So we've done our chain one, we're not gonna work into that first stitch. Instead, we're gonna work into this second stitch, which is all the way over here. So there's our first stitch that we're skipping, and we're going into that next stitch under both loops, yarn over to bring our loop up, and then we're ready to work our US single crochet, our UK double crochet by pulling through both loops. We're going to work one US single crochet into each stitch across, just as we did for uh, working into our chain, making sure that we place one single crochet into each across. Continue to work across and I'll meet you at the end of row two, ready for our next row. So I'm just working that last stitch of row two, making sure that I grab both those loops to work that final single crochet. And at the end of row two, you should now have a stitch count of 17. Have to remember not to count that chain as our first stitch. So we actually start counting here. So this is our chain one that does not count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oops, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So at the end of row two, you should have 17 single crochets. Going into row three, again, we're gonna start with a turning chain of one, and we're skipping that first stitch underneath our chain one, ready to work into our second stitch with another single crochet. So we're skipping that first stitch and inserting our hook under that second stitch. Yarn over, bring your loop up, yarn over and pull through two to complete your US single crochet. We then continue to work one single crochet into each stitch across to the end of the row and remember not to work into that chain one at the end because we've already decreased across it. So continue all the way across and I'll meet you for our last stitch of row three. So we can just make sure we're not working into that chain one. So I've reached my final stitch and I can tell it's my final stitch because it's the last V that I have to work into. That's my chain one. So I'm going to insert my hook underneath that final stitch, bring my loop up to work my final single crochet. So at the end of row three, we, again, we start by looking for our chain one and then we need to make sure that we have a stitch count of 16. So ignore the chain one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 single crochets. 
Now for rows four to 10, we're going to repeat row three and the stitch count is actually going to reduce by one single crochet on each row. At the end of row 10, we're only gonna have a stitch count of nine. So I'm going to leave you to repeat those rows. So just as we started row three, we start with our turning chain of one and we skip that first stitch underneath our chain before continuing to work one single crochet into each stitch across. So you're going to repeat this for rows four to ten so that at the end of row ten you only have nine single crochets remaining and I'll meet you at the end of row ten where we're going to increase to create the extension how to explain that you know the branch that's the word after row 10 we're going to go on to increase to create our branches on our tree so continue on and i'll meet you at the end of row 10. so at the end of row 10 you should now have a stitch count of nine and you should have 10 rows so two four six eight and ten now for row 11 we start as we did before with our turning chain of one we're going to skip that first stitch and work one single crochet into each stitch across. And then at the end of these eight stitches, that's two. We're going to work a extension. We're going to add a branch on. So that's four, five, Six, seven, and there's number eight. Remember, we don't work into that chain one. And to add our branch on, once we've completed this eighth stitch, we're going to make a chain of four. So we yarn over the hook and pull through four times. So that's one, two, three, twiddly yarn and number four. We can then turn our work ready for row 12. Now for row 12, we're gonna work into our branch before we continue to work across the, rem the rest of the row. So we're gonna start by working into that second chain from hook. So remember this loop doesn't count. There's our first chain. And here is our second chain. So like we did when we worked our starting chain, we're just going to insert our hook underneath that top loop. Yarn over, bring our loop through, yarn over and pull through two. And then we've worked into this one. So we're going to insert our hook under the next top loop of that next chain to work a next single crochet and then into our final chain, we're going to work under that top loop, just turning mine to make it easier. Yarn over and bring our loop up. Yarn over and pull through two. This time we're not gonna skip that first stitch, we're gonna to continue to work into each stitch across the remaining of the row. So we just insert our hook as normal and work our single crochet, that's one. Oops two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That was the eight we had from our previous row so at the moment we have one sorry one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven single crochets but we need to add a branch on again so we're going to make a chain of four again so we just yarn over and pull our hook through four times to make that chain of four and then we're ready to turn to work row 13. So just like we did for row 12, we're gonna start by working into that second chain from hook. That loop doesn't count. There's our first chain. So here's our first loop to work underneath. We just insert our hook and work our single crochet. 
one. There's our second one. Two. And there's our third one. And then we have a branch on each side. So for the remainder of row 13, we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch across all the way to the end, making sure that we have turned that one there. It always gets a little bit twiddly, that first one. So at the end of row 13, we're going to have our stitch count of 14. So we're going all the way back up to quite a large row, uh, to quite a larger stitch count as well. So continue to work all the way across and I'll meet you at the end of row 13 so that we can have that stitch count of 14 ready to go into row 14. Oh, there's a lot of numbers there. So keep working across and I'll meet you shortly for the rest, um, sorry, for row 14. I'm just working my final stitch in row 13, just reminding you that it's a little bit tricky to get underneath those two loops of that first stitch we worked. Probably should have done this off camera, but just to show you that we all struggle. <laughs> just making sure we've got both of those loops on before working that final stitch. So at the end of row 13, you've now got your two branches and you should have a stitch count of 14. Going into row 14, we're going back to what we were doing previously. So we start with our turning chain of one. And then we're going to skip that stitch underneath our turning chain, working one single crochet into each of the other stitches. So we skip that first one and go into that second stitch, working one single crochet into each stitch across. So our stitch count is going to start reducing again by one on each row. So work one single crochet into the remaining stitches and I'll meet you at the end of row 14. So at the end of row 14, we're going to have a stitch count again of 13 as we start to decrease back down. And rows 15 all the way up to 27, we're going to continue to repeat row 14 and our stitch count will continue to decrease by one. Now at the end of row 27, you're only going to have one stitch remaining and that's where we're going to fasten off. We keep working rows 15 through to 27 until you have just one stitch remaining and I'll meet you back there. Just remember to skip that first stitch underneath your chain and that will create your decrease without having to work a decrease. Keeps things really easy and keeps your edges really neat too. So keep working and I'll meet you at the end of row 27. So I'm just working my row 27 with just one stitch remaining. If I can get my hook through kind of in the middle. It's quite difficult to do this last one. There we go. And we are ready to fasten off our main colour or our tree colour once we have finished. So I'm going to make a little chain one just to create a knot. And I would recommend leaving a long tail because we can use this to sew up our terries. So you kind of need to make it double the length of your could be also be used as an, an applique. Um, so I'm just kind of making it double the length so we can use this for seaming later. And then we have our first tree shape. And what we're going to do is before we go ahead and make our second one, I'm going to add the trunk to this first section. And already I've turned it upside down because our trunk is going to go at the bottom. But you should at the moment have a beautiful tree shape. And we're going to go straight into working our trunk. So we're going to need our brown colour, not our yellow. So I'm going to grab, grab our brown. And what we need to do is to find the eighth stitch across. So I've got my tail here because this, it doesn't really matter actually, it's pretty much reversible this, but I've just got my tail here. So I'm just counting across from the beginning chain. So there's one, two, use a needle so you can see what I'm counting. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, there's number seven, little sneaky one there, and number eight. So we're going to count across 
eight stitches and that's where we're going to rejoin our yarn. So I'm going to quickly remove my needle and insert my hook into that eight stitch. You can join with a slip stitch if you like. Um, sorry, with a slip knot, I prefer just to place it over and bring it back through that the reverse of our chain and make a chain of one to secure. We are then going to work one single crochet into the same stitch that we joined. So I'm just reinserting my hook into that same stitch. Yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through those two stitches. We're then going to work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So we're going to insert our hook into that next one and work one single crochet. Working over my tail as well, as you can see. So that's one. There's our next one. There's a little hole there. That's number two. And into this next one here again. So it's And that's number three. So for row one of our trunk, we now have four single crochets and a nice neat join. Give that a pull, I should pull that in a little bit more. There we go. Going into row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And then we are ready to work one single crochet into each stitch across. So working right underneath that chain into that first stitch that's one single crochet and then one single crochet into each stitch across. That's two, three and four. So at the end of row two, we will also have a stitch count of four. We're going to chain one and turn going into round three and in this round we're going to work an increase into our first stitch so we're going to place two single crochets into the same stitch as underneath the chain so here's our first stitch so we're going to insert our hook yarn over to bring our loop up yarn over and pull through those two loops I split my yarn and then we're going to work another single crochet into the same stitch so we insert our hook back into that same stitch that we've just worked into yarn over bring our loop up yarn over and pull through two we're then going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches so that's one and two before we increase again into our last stitch. So we're going to work two single crochets into this last stitch as well. So we insert the hook and work our first single crochet and we're working a second single crochet into that same stitch again. So at the end of row three, our stitch count is going to be six single crochets. So we've got one, two, three, four, five and six. First one's a little bit tiny because my chain one's in the way. So there's my first one. For row four, very simply, we're going to chain one and work one single crochet into each stitch across. So here's our first one. That's one. Two. Three. four, five, and our final stitch makes number six. If I can get my hook through, there we go. So at the end of row four, you're going to have a stitch count of six single crochets. And we can fasten this off as well. I'm not going to leave a long tail for sewing because we're going to start actually sewing from up here. So we're just going to leave a long enough tail to weave in. And there we have our tree and our trunk ready to go. So you need to make a second one. So as if by magic, 
I now have two. Now, obviously, you do need to make two of these, so you can go back and watch the video again from the beginning to make your second portion of the tree. Before we seam these together, we're going to attach our safety eyes. I have managed to found, have managed to find a secondary six millimeter. So I'm going to stick with the six millimeter eyes. I'm going to show you how I attach them. Now it doesn't matter which way you have your tree facing, but you can see with the trunk there are two sides here. So I've got what is the right side facing me. So I have the ridges at the top as opposed to the stitches showing at the top. If you're looking to recreate the cute face that I made on these ones, I've placed the eyes between rows six and seven. So two, four, there's row six and seven. So I'm gonna go in between there. And you're kind of looking um, to place them so there are three stitches in between that are empty. So I'm just gonna guess about there. So it's kind of in line with the bottom of the trunk. I'm just going to push the eye through. I'm not going to attach the safety portion just yet because I want to place the second eye so I'm happy that they're in the same place. So we've got one, two, three stitches and that's where I'm going to place the next one. Oops. And that doesn't look that good. So, oh, it's not three stitches. Okay, hang on. I need to move this one a long one because there were only there should be three clear stitches between and there we go they're nice and balanced they're in the same place so just kind of outside of the trunk in between row six and seven so we've got two four there's the top of row six there's the bottom of row seven and they're in that row in between there so I'm going to turn them over and you can see that you've got these bits here now sometimes these safety eyes have different backings these safety eyes have little grippers, not only, oh my goodness, it's hard to show you, not only at, um, will they grip the actual spine or the column through these bits here, they've also got nice little bits that will stop it turning in the fabric as well. Um, these can be quite a challenge to get on um, and take a little bit of practice, but the way that I do it is I kind of place it on the top and with my thumbs, I've got my fingers on the base of the eye and then push down and you're not looking for it to be too tight but you want it to be tight enough that it's not going to come undone and that's that in place so once you're happy with the placement of your eyes you're just going to make sure you've got no yarn in the way and just place those over so that you've got the cup element at the kind of facing up up the top of the column and just place them on and squeeze with all your might oh, to get them on so that's the eyes in place. Now we're not going to sew the mouth on until we've sewn up our terries. So we're going to need our stuffing now as well. So I am using some um, toy filling. Now this is obviously within the UK, you can get it that it is toy safe. Um, you don't have to do that. I know that lots of people prefer to use the stuffing from pillows and things like that. You really don't need an awful lot of stuffing. I get mine from a craft store. I do actually work at Hobbycraft now, but this was purchased before I worked there. So you pay full price for it. Um, and you want to just kind of make sure that your stuffing isn't... You see how you've got these little lumps and it's all kind of... Because this does come in quite a compacted bag. So make sure that it's all fluffed up and then we can put that to one side and get sewing. So once your eyes are in place, you do have a right side and a wrong side of your project now. And we're going to place it. So I've got... Again, I've got these stitches on the inside. I'm just going to place them together. And I've got my two tails. One of my tails is shorter than the other. I'm going to hope that the other one goes all the way around. So we're going to sew as much as we can before we start stuffing our terry. So I'm going to get the longest end. Let's clear this out from behind here so we have a bit of a clearer space. Just going to attach my needle to the long thread and we are literally going to have it right side facing and what we're going to do is a whip stitch all the way down the edges working through both sections of our i'm sorry working through both sides of these pieces so they're joined together for some reason i sew with the opposite hand that i crochet 
no idea why but very simply I'm just going to go through the back of the other and we just come back around so with whip stitching you're kind of doing a kind of circular motion around your project so you're just in through the same side each time and it gives quite a neat finish when you're leaving this visible the seeming visible we're just making sure that we're working through both sides each time and catching the same stitches because what we don't want is for um, Terry to become an even as we're sewing down this edge so I'm just keeping an eye on these points here of the branches and making sure that they are at the same point and then pulling nice and tightly so that we're getting a tight close and there's no holes for anything to escape. So work all the way down to your first branch and I'll meet you there ready to work down the edge of the branch. So once we've reached our first branch, you can see that that's very well seamed. It doesn't look like it's well seamed, but it really is quite firm. We're going to just kind of rotate our project so that we can continue down. And we're going to continue to work all the way across now until we meet our trunks. So just keep continuing working the whip stitch around the edges of this branch. Making sure that you're working through both sides. And keeping it quite tight because you don't want anything to come through and then I'm going to work through the point or in between the two and then we just continue to work all the way down get to the corner we're going to do the same and then come all the way to and I'll meet you where the trunks are so keep whip stitching all the way around accrue these edge stitches so that it's nice and tightly kind of wound together or sewn together and I'll meet you at those trunks, ready to work the rest of our joining. So once we've reached our trunk, it's nice and easy to seam that bit, isn't it? Because you've got stitches to work through. Now, this trunk is not going to be stuffed. So what we're going to do is actually, whichever side you've ended up on, we're just going to go through the stitches along the edge of the trunk to say the seaming across there, because it doesn't matter if they're joined or not. Let me undo that because we are going to then sew the trunk up flat. And then once you're back to the edge here, we can continue to whip stitch all the way across. Oops, there we go. And then we can just continue to seam. It doesn't change the shape of the tree at all, but we just continue to whip stitch through all the stitches all the way back to the top of our project. We're gonna leave I'm probably going to start stuffing when I get to these points here. So continue to work all the way up and I'll meet you when you reach your next branch ready to start stuffing. So annoyingly, I have run out of yarn. I'm going to show you what I've done because I am inherently lazy. I've pushed in the ends so I don't have to sew those in. They're already fastened off from the beginning of our project. With this one, I've tied a little knot and I'm just going to place that end inside as well. And I'm going to reattach some more yarn. I'm simply just going to tie it on, leaving a tail long enough to tuck in. So this end is simply just going to get tucked in. It will be hidden in by the stuffing, so I'm not concerned about it coming out anywhere. And I'm just going to continue to whip stitch all the way up to that first branch and I will meet you there. So I've seamed up to this first branch here all the way through and what I'm going to do now is start to stuff the tree and quite simply just kind of rolling it a little bit and pushing it in because what we want to do is while we have access to these corners we want to make sure that we're getting that stuffing into those corners nice and neatly because we don't want to leave Terry unplump. I don't like a unplump um stuffy or plush or whatever you want to call it so I do like to be a little bit generous and you want it so that it's not overly stuffed but so there's a bit of stuffing everywhere and already that corner doesn't have any stuffing kind of just push a little bit right into that corner the stuffing can really make or break a project like this so you don't want to be too shy in getting that stuffing in there but seeing as this section is completely sealed now, we're apart from right at the bottom, obviously, we've still got an opening there, but that's fine. Um, we're just going to fill Terry up there. 
and then we can either continue to fill all the way he's definitely half full now so you can see from the side it's not overly full a little bit of space a little bit of movement but not too little and then you can continue to add a little bit more stuffing And then seam a little bit more, making sure that you've got some, well, we can position that in a moment. Oops. So we can continue to whip stitch up the side of this terry. And then as we get further up, we can readjust where the stuffing is placed. Making sure that it's getting into that corner there as well for cinching those that seam together. And just continuing to oh goodness, it's getting awkward now. That's better. And then leave a small space ready to make sure you can add your final bit of stuffing in because we don't want it to be too tiny. And if you're really struggling to get your stuffing in, if you've got a kind of blunt end pair of scissors, which I'll show you in a moment, we'll make sure we've got those corners. Get a tiny bit more in there, I think. You can always with your blunt end of scissors, kind of push it in to where you need it to be. If you use your crochet hook, it is the risk of pulling your stuffing back out again. I'm just making sure that I've got enough. Yeah, once it's in place, that I will be able to kind of move it around a bit. So I'm just going to pull that closed and work these last few stitches. Try and get that off. There we go. I'm going to show you the really quick way of burying all your ends as well, which is the great thing about working on stuffed projects. There we go, this is probably the last stitch. I'm going to tie this off before I do anything else. So to do that, like I've been trying to avoid the whole time, I'm putting my needle back through that hole, the loop that I've made, pulling nice and tight. Now, once you've made that knot, remember you fastened off with this other strand here, so everything's nice and tight. We're then going to insert our hook through the tree and come back out one of our stitches. Make sure nothing's in the way. We're going to go back into that same stitch, We're kind of pushing our needle through our stuffing and then come out somewhere else. This is where it gets a little bit tough if you've really packed your stuffing in, like I seem to have. Just come back out another stitch, and then we can go back in and out again a couple more times. And as you can see, as I'm pulling that thread, it's not coming out, it's not getting any looser, or I'm not gaining any more thread. So it is actually buried into your project. And you can simply just snip at the tightness of your project and then push and the end disappears. So now that we've seamed that, we can weave in these other ends. If you've got any other ends lying around, pop them in as well and kind of hide them into your project through the stuffing once again. And when you're happy, you can just simply snip and that end disappears. All that's left to do now is to seam our trunk and I'm going to use these strands that are kind of hanging around um, without adding any extra materials to our project. We can just seam and again whip stitch around our trunk to the corner and I'm going to fasten that one off. Can use one of these strands to work across the end. That's why I haven't woven these in because they're quite essential. So I'm going to use this strand to kind of do this edge here. 
and that's secure. And then we can use this final strand just to work this final edge of our trunk. You can be neat, of course, and add more yarn if you want to. I just prefer to make use of these ends and give them a purpose. Because why wouldn't we? And once you again, once you've reached the end of that trunk, you can use your needle to create a final knot. Make sure that everything's nice and secure. And very simply, just like we did with our green, we can bury these ends into our trunk or you can go all the way up into your tree itself to bury these ends. So once you've done that, we're going to add on our smile and then we're ready to create our stars. So once we've ready to put on our smiles, we just simply need a small amount of red to add on our smiles. Now we're going to insert our needle from the back of our project. We don't have to go where um, the smile is going to be coming out from. We just need to insert our needle and it's where it comes out on the right side that's the most important. So I'm going to aim to start my smile underneath where this eye is, kind of here. So this is probably row, row four, between rows four and five. I'm just going to use my needle, hopefully find my finger. There we go. No, I want it further along. There's too much stuffing there. Oh dear. We just want it to kind of come out underneath. And what I'm doing is pulling it all the way through. So there's still a tail at this end, but we've got a nice long length here. Now I'm going to make my smile all the way across. So I'm going to go back into underneath the next eye but I'm going to angle my needle so that it comes out kind of in the middle, one row below. Is that in the middle? Yeah, roughly there. So it looks a little bit like that. So when I pull that, you can see that it's already creating a little smile. You can go just half a row below if you want to, or two rows below like I have. And what we're going to do is just like we did for burying those ends, we're going to reinsert our needle where we came back out of and then we can push all the way up and out of the back of Terry. And this is going to create a piece for the smile to be held down by. Now we don't want this too tight, so we're just going to loosen that up a little bit by pulling on it gently before securing it again. So once you're happy with your smile and you're happy with its positioning, to fasten off, we do exactly what we did before. We're gonna go in and out of the same stitches, kind of working through the stuffing to secure the yarn in place. So kind of go in and out a few times. Don't have to pull very tightly because obviously we don't wanna distort that smile on the front. We're just gonna go in and out a few times through the stuffing because that will help secure that yarn in place. Once you're happy that you've gone in and out a few times, you can simply snip. And when you squish it, that red will disappear. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side with the other piece of yarn that's coming out of the back. So all that's left to do is to stitch up our star and sew it on. In the top right hand corner you're going to find a link to go and watch this video on how to crochet this simple star and you literally just sew it on to the very top. You can make two so it's double sided if you want to. I just like to put one on so there's a, def a definitive right side and wrong side. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial to make your very own Terry the Tree and of course if you'd have give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to tag me in a photo of your completed Terry so that I can celebrate your success with this project. I'll be back with you very soon with another crochet tutorial and until then, keep it cosy.